Psalm 142 is the fifth in a group of eight Psalms of David that occurred near the end of the Psalter. In this case, uh, David is uh, in a cave. He is lonely. He feels uh, imprisoned. He speaks of his cave as a prison. Uh, and it is classified as a lament, certainly a psalm that many can identify with at different times in life. You might feel lonely, you might feel uh, trapped uh, and discouraged, and uh, this psalm could be a prayer that you can relate to. You can see there how it fits into this group of eight psalms in this Davidic group. And uh, as we move into the psalm, we do have this uh, superscription that tells us uh, that this is a masculine of David when he was in a cave. We have two occasions when it's stated in the text that David was in a cave at Adulam in 1 Samuel 22 and then at En Gedi in 1 Samuel 24. So it could be either of those occasions or another occasion that we're not aware of. The complaint is stated in verses 1 and 2. With my voice I cry out, I plead for mercy, I pour out my complaint, I tell my trouble before him. And that's simply all God asks is that we speak, we talk to him, we put it all out there, lay it out there for him. His complaint uh, continues in verse 3, when my spirit faints within me, you know my way. Uh, that is actually a statement of confidence uh, that may be an echo of Psalm 139, where David begins by saying, you've searched me and you know me. Uh, and David will say later in that psalm, there's no place I can hide. I can go uh, up to the heavens, or I can go to the depths of the earth, and even even there, you'll, you'll be, your right hand will hold me. So even though David is in a cave, um, he has confidence that uh, he's, he's, he is not um, unseen uh, by God, that God still sees him, God still knows him, still has his hand in his life. The complaint resumes, he says, in the path where I walk, they've hidden a trap uh, for me. And that word trap now has occurred in uh, the last three of the Psalms, so it forms something of a mini theme that connects these three together. He's got enemies that are trying to, to trap him. He looks to the right to see if there's anyone to take notice of him. Uh, note that the right uh, often can suggest a place of strength. The right hand for the majority of people is the strong hand. And so this uh, euphemism was used uh, in Hebrew to express a place of strength, your right hand man, your your, your strong place. So he looks to the right, looks to the to the person who should be next to him providing strength, but there's no one. Uh, so he is alone. There's no refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. Uh, so he's, he's lacking in friendship, companionship, uh, refuge. He's feeling isolated uh, in this in this psalm. He says, then I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion, the land of living. Since he can't turn to any people in his life. He turns to the Lord. He's reminded, as uh, Psalm 16 says, that the Lord is my chosen portion, my cup. You hold my lot. So very similar language there in that psalm of trust. And so he returns to a request, attend to my cry. I'm brought low. Deliver me from my persecutors. They're too strong for me. Bring me out of prison. Uh, hence the key word for this psalm, prison. And it does sound like it's more of a figurative type of prison. David's never imprisoned uh, in that sense, so, but he is in a prison in the sense that of, of trapped, alone, isolated, friendless. Uh, so bring me out of the prison. Why? That I may give thanks to your name. So this is motivation for God to act uh, so that God would be worshiped and honored through this. The righteous will surround me for you will deal bountifully with me. Uh, David concludes this lament with a beautiful statement of confidence, again echoing Psalm 16 of God's abundant provision that God himself is David's portion. Uh, the Lord himself is David's bounty, his good. And so David concludes this psalm of lament with a beautiful statement of trust.